Okay, we're recording. Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, thanks for coming back. It's been a little while since we had spring break and all that stuff. Um, if you're able to jump to the on the near pod, that would be awesome. Uh, just so you're aware, this lesson is being recorded for learning purposes uh, as we're rolling through here. And uh, just start some of our class expectations. Uh, one, make sure you're following along with the Nearpod lesson. You use the chat tools respectfully and appropriately. You're responding to questions and instructions the first time. And that helps us just kind of keep a good flow as we go through um, the class today. Let me jump right to the course so you can kind of see where we're at. We ha have uh, lesson one and lesson two recordings, which I uh, posted here to the announcement board. So if you need to see those. If we look at the plan section real quick, um, you see some things just got done with spring break, which you, sounds like a lot of you guys had some fun or at least took a break, which is nice. Uh, you see, we have live class, classes every Thursday at 1.15. Um, the assignments that we assigned here will be, um, be due a week from now. Uh, just a heads up for seniors, uh, part-time SOEP students or are going to be graduating this um, or early graduates, right? Um, you probably you need to get everything done by this week right here, the first week of, of May. So this class, unfortunately, I'm still developing the curriculum. So I'm going to try to get out as soon as you can. So if you can hurry and get that done when I have it. Um, also, something that's got put on the calendar the end of the blocks right here, but actually on the 25th, I'm actually going to be doing the skills test for this uh, course. If you want to take the skills test, we had pretty good turnout for um, the part one skills test uh, for teaching the profession part one. Um, I think per, uh, we have a skill cert that you get for the school if you're at a certain level and then actually a skills uh certificate you get something put into the mail and stuff like that and most people actually got a certificate which was awesome so grateful for everybody jumping in those courses and every in that test but we'll be holding that at 115 on the 25th um, it's really quick about 30 minutes long doesn't take super long um, but if that's something you want you're interested in doing it's it is not a requirement but it's just something to kind of show um, Today, as we're going through the unit, we'll be on unit three. We're going to be talking about educational theories. Um, Nearpod links here. We got a quiz. And then our second kind of thing is just a mid-course reflection of just kind of what you've learned so far. Uh, we did go over in part one some education theories, but this one we're going to go into a little bit more detail into some things that um, – are kind of currently being worked on in schools. And then after that, we're going to um, next week is culture and education and then uh, state and national standards. Um, we'll round out the class. OK, before I begin here, do you guys have any questions? About what's going on in the course? Things that uh, you need to do. Looks like most people are, are keeping up just fine. No questions. OK, very good. OK, so what we're going to do is we're going to highlight uh, three educational theories. Um, and. What was it? I found out that I want to. Oh, OK. All right, maybe we'll talk about that after James. Um, maybe you can give me a little bit more explanation on that at the end or I'll private private chat you real quick. All right, very good. Okay, so the three things we're gonna go over, right? Um, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. This is something that we did um, talk about last time uh, a little bit. We're going to go over it a little bit more um, just because it's just such an important piece of 
being able to learn and uh, be able to learn, right? The second one that we're going to go over is called uh, social and emotional learning. This is something that is really being pushed in schools now. And we'll go over what that is, what it looks like. And you've probably seen some things that are kind of implemented in it. It does dive in a lot into kind of like mental health being um, being able to uh, associate with others, that kind of thing. OK. And then the last one uh, is stages of development. We did speak about that in the part one of the course. Uh, it was it's Eric Erickson, who is the the um, theorist on that. Um, and it's really good to kind of break down a little bit of where you can go like positive and negatively in each stage of life. And so some, some, sometimes these stages of life, they really kind of, uh, you can go into both. Right. And so we'll go over each of those. Okay. Let's start to highlight a little bit of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Um, as you can see here, it is just like a triangle, or not triangle, a yeah, triangle, a pyramid, kind of like your uh, good old health pyramid they always talked about in health, right? Which is completely flawed. That's another, that's it for another story. But we have here, we have basic needs, psychological needs, and self-fulfillment needs, okay? Um, so everybody, we all have different needs as humans or organisms, right? Whatever you want to call us. Um, and we have basic needs for living and survival, right? Uh, these basic needs are like physiological needs, like food, warmth, rest, um, safety needs, uh, security, uh, being able to be things. So for example, if we're going to tie this into education, okay? So I've been keeping track of kind of a family that that I'm associated have acquaintances with in Ukraine. And when the war break at, broke out in Ukraine, um, their kids were thrown through a loop, right? They they instead of going to school, they couldn't go to school anymore, right? So basically that safety piece of it was not there. They could not go to school they could not have those things because they didn't have it as well as they lost their home they had their travel they were like in a, a camp a refugee camp um and they had to start doing school kind of online which i which is great i think online is a great format but if you were to throw in that i don't think you're going to be learning at a good level right so here, here's some other things like if you don't have food in your belly, how is it? How are you supposed to test well, right? How are you supposed to think when you're thinking about where you're getting your next food, right? Or survival. So that's kind of the basic needs thing. If we're going into psychological needs, which this dovetails right into, or just goes right into social emotional learning, which we're going to talk about in a second. Um, you have belongingness and love needs, uh, esteem needs. And so, for example, like you need to have friends, right? Uh, people you like to associate with, right? Um, you like to feel accomplishment, right? Uh, accomplish things, get things done. And that's all those things are good for like your your mental health, your fit, your, you know, and goes in your physical well-being and being able to, um, you know, think about working in school, right? If you're thinking completely at school, like, oh, I'm being bullied or I'm being uh, made fun of or things like that, you're not able to learn, right? So how can we help students be able to overcome these, right? That's what we're trying to think of. And the last one um, on his hierarchy of needs is self-fulfillment needs. Um, to achieve one one's full potential, including uh, creative activities. So this is where you really are at peace or harmony with yourself. You have these other 
needs taken care of below and you're able to do what you want to do you find out um really how you like this thing yeah okay you relate to this a lot that's awesome yeah because i mean but when you have those things right underneath and you get into a good environment right and so i love one of the things I, I love about utah virtual academy is it creates this awesome environment right where you have those safety you have fulfillment in, in ways you can and you can actually go and look at the things you want to do right um I have people that work during the day uh because that's what they want to do right and then they can do classes i have people that um are doing competitions or they they have all these kind of things but it helps i believe in in this aspect so yeah and you can learn without being worried all the time about about other stuff that that's not really relevant to school okay so i love my uh, maslow's hierarchy of needs and we're as we're kind of looking at it from a student's point of view um that's what we do okay we're gonna play a little bit of bingo not really <laughs> but what i want you to do is in the chat i want you to put um example like uh Pick the emotion you felt at the beginning of the week, okay? And then you don't have to answer this question in the chat, but how did this emotion impact the way you processed information? Okay, so for example, um, the beginning of this week, I'm actually uh, watching my, my kids. My wife went out of town. And so I'm gonna pick, uh, I'm gonna put in the chat C3, okay? So if you look at it, C3, I have C right here and three, I'm this guy. I'm like, oh, how am I gonna do this, right? Taking kids to school, picking them up, that kind of stuff. All right, somebody put a D4, I like that one. <laughs> how, how's other people feeling? Okay, A4, all oh, right there, just a boop. Who knows? All right, any else out there? What emotion did you feel at the beginning of this week? Any others? But what are your thoughts? <laughs> All right. Well, why we kind of did this little activity is uh, this kind of goes a little bit into social emotional learning, right? Where what it does is it really teaches, um, we're going to go over what S-E-L stands for, it stands for social and emotional learning, okay? And if you look kind of at the graphic at the bottom left or bottom right down here, it talks about these five different steps, which we'll go over in a little bit more detail, but it's basically showing self-awareness, right? So this that activity kind of shared with me, okay, I know how I'm feeling, right? um right now uh you can also like look at self-management um so you think okay i'm feeling this way so what do i need to do to make myself feel better what do i need to do to um manage myself so i just not punching other people right um i have a son that has a couple behavior issues let's just say that he likes to um, engage in property destruction sometimes, and he likes and physical aggression towards others. And, uh, you know, so he likes to uh, thump on his little brother, right? Yeah, I'll be finishing up pretty soon. Um, you know, he likes to beat up on his little brother a little bit. 
So we got to looking at strategies that it could kind of help out, right? Um, then you're saying about responsible decision making, okay? Uh, re relationship skills, and then self awareness, right? And so I think all of these things are just important skills to work with because you're going to have to work with people, even though at times like you may not like working with some people, right? You're going to have to work with people throughout life. And so these kind of skills and social emotional learning are something that um, is really good to kind of uh, grasp. Okay, so what is social emotional learning it is the process of developing and using the skills, attitudes, behaviors and knowledge that help youth and adults. Okay, so it helps identify and regulate emotions, develop positive relationships and make responsible decisions. Okay, so what I'm going to do is we're going to play this video just really quickly. Let's see here. This is about five minutes, but it won't be much longer after that before we finish for those that need to leave. Um, but this really kind of helps out what social emotional learning is, tells you a little bit more in detail. Hello and welcome to Teachings in Education, Social and Emotional Learning, S-E-L. The process by which people manage their emotions in social settings. Credit to castle.org and go to their site for more information. First off, why should educators devote their time to social emotional learning? Student emotions are often responsible for their boredom and inappropriate behavior. You need to understand that emotions affect learning and student behavior. Teachers can use emotions to garner interest and maintain engagement and get their students to behave. Now, how can SEL be implemented into school systems? SEL should guide curriculum choices the classroom activities, novels to be read, and courses that are offered. Specifically, teachers can utilize and design SEL assessments. They can teach and model direct practices of social emotional learning. They can even integrate SEL into their own lessons. Onto the SEL core competencies, which is basically a framework for what should be taught to students in various waves and across multiple settings. There are five in total. The first competency to teach your students is self-awareness. Self-awareness is the ability to identify your own emotions, thoughts, and values while understanding how they influence your behavior. Throughout anyone's lifetime, they will experience a wide variety of emotions. The first thing to do is to teach students to identify their emotions. It's important to have an accurate self-perception. Students should know who they are and understand their parameters. Self-confidence is absolutely essential to anyone's success. Great teachers know the importance of teaching self-confidence to their students. And lastly, self-efficacy from a social standpoint is the individual's ability to initiate and engage in social settings and create interpersonal relations. The second competency is self-management. Self-management can be defined as the ability to manage your own emotions, thoughts, stresses, impulses, and behaviors through different set situations. Students need to overcome and master their weaknesses. Students can foster self-management by developing and setting goals for themselves. Goal setting can be a great classroom activity. Stress management is something perceived as being an adult issue. Children have stresses as well and should be taught how to deal with their own personal stress. We all know how important it is to be organized. Organizational skills can help set students up for success all throughout their lives. On to the third competency, social awareness. Social awareness is the ability to understand social norms, take perspective and empathize with others from diverse backgrounds. As a teacher, think about how many students today lack respect and then think of how appreciative you are of those students that do show respect. From a global perspective, you want your students to appreciate the diversity that's present in school systems today. Identify lessons and activities, such as culture studies. And lastly, you want your students to understand that others may be emotionally hurt or excited or sad, etc. Moving forward to the next competency is relationship skills. Relationship skills are defined as the ability to establish and maintain healthy relationships with diverse individuals and groups 
through communication. Individuals with good relationship skills are also good at working together in teams. Teamwork skills can be developed through cooperative learning and sports. Relationships and friendships that last through the years exist when people are able to communicate with one another in an open and honest way. Teach students how to actually build a relationship. That means not being a fair weather friend to continually invest time into people. And the last competency is decision making. Decision making is the ability to make constructive choices about personal behavior and social interactions based on social norms. The first part of decision making is self reflection. You have to understand your personal situation and stance before making important life decisions. Next is being able to analyze the situation. Students should know how important it is to think critically and to use the available data and information. Teaching students to solve problems is something teachers should be doing every day in their classrooms. And we're going to finish up with responsibility. We want to raise our children to be responsible members of a society. Right now, I want to say thank you for your time. All right, so that gives all of the, the five different areas of um, social emotional learning. You probably have learned some of these throughout school. Um, so uh, that's kind of what it is. If you want to dig more into this, it's very going to be very, very popular because honestly, kids need that self confidence and everything like that in order to learn um, to be able to be aware of themselves, others, and be aware of the, the situations around them and other people's feelings. Okay, so there's going to be a class code in the quiz today. Okay, that's one of the questions. The class code is BU. Okay, BU. And I'm going to open this up at the very end. So we do it. Uh, last thing, last but not least, what we're going to be talking about, we're just going to kind of review it from part one is the stages of development okay starting at infancy okay when a baby is first born this is done by eric erickson is who is the, the theorist that is behind this infancy they come to uh they're born they're here on earth right in a baby they either learn trust or mistrust okay they learn trust from somebody that is loving them and gives them food. They give mistrust when people uh, mistrust them and and they don't give them love or food. Okay, uh, for example, um, love or love from a, an infant, right? Um, they actually did a study in another country because I think it's very unethical. They actually with babies and orphanages, they had some that would come and love, they'd love some of the babies, right? And they feed them, they feed all of them, right? Make sure they have food. But the other ones, they never loved them. They just fed them, they never touched them, they never talked nicely to them. Well, some of those babies that were not doing it, actually, they just died because they didn't have any love, they couldn't find any trust. It's a very interesting study. I think that was done in Russia, so. Dang Russians. <laughs> okay, the next one is early childhood. Okay, you're you're going for the autonomy versus shame and doubt. So autonomy, the kid is learning things. They want to do everything themselves. Um, they want to cook their own food. They want to do that only thing, which is great. We want them to do that. But then also, some you've probably seen some early kids, right? where they're shameful or doubtful of how to progress or do things. They always need help and that kind of stuff. So we want to lean them more to trying to be autonomous and doing those things and encouraging them to try new things and be creative and, and give those things. When they get into preschool, they are uh, intuitive versus guilt, okay? So they're really looking at things, wanting to explore things. I had my son the other day that's in this preschool stage he went and wanted to put he put uh what was it something in the outlet 
that's being intuitive, right? <laughs> Versus, and then he also likes to, uh, he does things and he doesn't like guilt, right? So he, um, when he gets, he does something that he may know he might get in trouble for, he lies and he tries to get away from it, right? So intuitive versus guilt. The next one, when you start to go to school age, which is industry versus inferiority, right? If you are kept told by your teacher, that's a, you can't do this, or your parents, uh, you're no good at school, you're not going to do good, you become inferior, right? And you start recluding yourself. Um, you start going away from the things versus industry, right? Where you want to learn more. You want to um, find these things, even if you're wrong, right? Which is fine being wrong. So many people are wrong. Most people make five, six mistakes before they get something right, okay? which that's learning. That's the learning process, right? And that's industry that you just keep pushing through and you're doing it, right? So there's two ways you can kind of go. The next one's adolescence, which you guys are at. Identity versus role confusion, right? Finding out who you are, that self-awareness, what you're like, what your dislikes, um, that kind of stuff. And if you're confused, you have this role confusion, you don't know where you fit in, right? In society and all that stuff, okay? Then you go to young adulthood, which is intimacy versus isolation. You either start having a family and making kids or you isolate yourself um, somewhere, right? And you don't engage in society. Then you have middle adulthood, which is generativity versus stagnation. So stagnation means you're still in isolation, right? From young adulthood. Uh, generative, uh, I can't even say the word anymore. I said it first, good first the last time um is basically where you're raising your kids you're you're finding a way to um help society grow that kind of stuff and the last one's maturity which is ego integrity which is basically meaning you are happy with what, what how life went you did well versus despair which means i wish i would have done certain things different right so we want to try to do all those positive things and that, that SEL kind of learning, the, the social emotional learning really kind of gets um, to you on that. Okay, that's the very end here. I'm going to open up the quiz or not the quiz, but this Nearpod lesson. I know I have to go back to here to open it up. If you need to go back and see maybe the course code or something like that as you're doing the assignment. Um, we have two things today, right? The quiz, which it's just a quick quiz. And then mid course reflection is where you just write a little bit. Quiz. I'm just going to show you it real quick. Should be super easy. Okay. What is S? SEL stand for, right? Okay, stages of development. We talked about that. Maslow hierarchy of needs, social emotional learning, what that is, and then your class code. Okay, submit it. There it is. Okay, if you guys have any questions, please uh, stay around and I will help you with any of those. If not, take care. I appreciate you guys coming and we'll talk to you next week. Have a good day.